So welcome to module 1 of the course of advanced geotechnical engineering and lecture number 11. In the previous uh, lecture we have uh, understood about the effective stress and uh, capillarity. In this uh, lecture we will try to look into some problems and also role of water played uh, in the uh, particularly when you are interacting when uh, so, uh, water is interacting with sand. So we have a particular uh, angle which is actually called as angle of repose. Dry unconsolidated drains will form a pile with a slope angle determined by the angle of repose. Suppose if you take a dry sand when a heap is formed when sand is completely dry the angle subtended with the horizontal is actually called as angle of repose that is maximum angle what the sand can uh, make. The angle of repose is the steepest angle at which a heap or pile of unconsolidated grains remains stable and is controlled by the frictional contact between the grains. This is controlled by the frictional contact between the grains. In general for dry materials the angle of repose increases with increasing grain size but usually lies between uh, about 30 to 37 degrees. For example if you take a sand having uh, classified as uh, SP uniformly graded sand and which is uh, having a average particle size about uh, 0.15 to 0.2 mm. This particular sand in dry state exhibits an angle of repose of about 28 to 29 degrees. So in general for dry materials the angle of repose increases and increasing grain size with increasing grain size but usually lies between 30 to 37 degrees. That means that the sand cannot actually stand vertical or steeper than this angle of repose. So here in this slide what you see is a pile of uh, sand which is actually formed with a dry sand. In contrast, uh, if you look into a micro picture here, what will actually happen is that you have the grain to grain contact between these two places. For example, if you take a magnific view, the grain to grain frictional contact uh, will ensure that to have a subtend an angle of that uh, you know the maximum steepest angle that what we call it as the angle of repair, repose. So what is the role of water? Suppose if you add little amount of water what we have discussed earlier is that it forms a thin film makes this uh, you know uh, appear like it can take uh, the so called steeper angles than angle of repose. This is because of the capillarity action. So think about uh, building a castle on the beach if the sand is totally dry it is impossible for you to build a pile of the sand with a steep face like a castle wall. But if you make the sand somewhat wet, however uh, it is possible that you can actually build a vertical wall. So if the sand is too wet again then it flows like a fluid and cannot remain in the position as a wall. So if the sand becomes uh, too wet it cannot actually uh, stand vertical. So this can be explained here for example if you take a particular uh, mould and you take a shape here. And in this case when you have got uh, water in contact with uh, uh, sand grains and when it is actually formed like a, a thin film which is uh, that this film is actually caused because of the surface tension of the thin film of the water is actually holding the grains together. You can see here the grains are actually held together by uh, you know this particular action of soil water that is solid water and air interaction. What you see is that solid, solid is nothing but the sand grains and water and air interaction. So here in this particular case a slightly wet and unconsolidated materials exhibit very high angle of repose. So slightly wet and unconsolidated grains exhibit very high angle of repose. The reason is that the surface tension between the water and the solid grains tends to hold the grains in place. So in case of a dry state the angle of repose is very less. In case of a slightly wet state 
the un same unconsolidated sand grains or unconsolidated materials exhibit very high angle of repose, because the surface tension between the water and the solid grains tends to hold the grains in place. Now, on the other hand we have discussed that if we are actually adding more amount of water than what it desired. For example, a water saturated sand it actually flows like this, water saturated sand flows like this and here what you see is that the grains are actually floating along in the water and water completely surrounds the all grains and uh, eliminate at grain to grain contact. So, whatever the frictional interaction which is actually generated because, because of the grain to grain contact will remain absent if you have got actually more amount of water surrounding the grains. And in addition to that the surface tension whatever which is actually accumulated that uh, the films which are actually formed because of the solid air water interaction get washed off. So, the role of water uh, is explained here when the material becomes saturated with water the angle of repose is reduced to very small values uh, and the material tends to flow like a fluid. Here the material tends to flow like a fluid and the grains actually float along with the water. This is because the water gets between the grains and eliminates the grain to grain frictional contact. So, almost like the grain to grain frictional contact uh, comes to 0. So, in case of clays for example, if you have got uh, uh, a clay uh, uh, the role of water is again uh, peculiar. So, in this particular slide you have uh, on the left hand side unexpanded clay that uh, particularly some uh, expansive clays uh, which are having mantuban light when they come in contact with water they increase in volume. So, when the polar water molecules are in coming contact with this platelet particles the what uh, water accumulates between the particles or platelets and there is a possibility that uh, uh, these, uh, uh, these this is the uh, it will form a status like expanded clay. So, this is in the dry state and this is in the wet state. Same time when this water you know evaporates because of the exposure to the uh, temperature there is a possibility that uh, you know the clay is subjected to shrinkage which is in terms of uh, for this type of uh, soils it is also called as hydro compaction. So, soils containing spectites or mantuban light expand when they become wet as the water enters the crystal structure and increases the volume of the mineral. It increases the volume of the mineral because the water accumulates between the platelet particles and makes the prior particles push apart and because of that the volume of the uh, soil mass increases. The volume of the soil mass increases means that the soil mass is subjected to an increase in the swelling potential and it is also you know when it uh, water gets evaporated it is also subjected to the so called uh, uh, shrinkage. When such clays dry out the loss of water causes the volume to decrease and the clays to shrink and are compact. So, the clay particles will be pulled together and uh, this process of uh, you know evaporation of the clay evaporation of the water out of these uh, uh, you know particles which are actually formed with uh, smectites or uh, mantuban light mineral is actually called as the process called as hydro compaction. So, hydro compaction generally occurs in case of a soils having minerals which are actually have nothing but a smectites or mantuban light and they expand when they become the wet, uh, wet as water enters the crystal structure and increases the volume of the mineral. When such clays dry out the loss of water causes the volume to decrease and the clays to shrink or compact. So, this process what we actually have discussed is called uh, uh, hydro compaction. So, we actually have seen uh, you know uh, a peculiar uh, you know role of water in case of a sandy soil when the water is less it makes the uh, sand to uh, have very steep uh, angles of repose. When, uh, when the water is high the angle of repose is reduced to 0 in the sense that uh, the uh, sand with the high water content starts uh, flowing. In contrast if you have got a, a higher amount of water the clay tends to uh, expand its volume and when the water is lost out of the uh, same clay because of the evaporation then it is actually the process which actually induces onto the soil is called the hydro compaction. So, the physical examples of capillary phenomenon if you look into it 
this is uh, you know very clearly at the beaches at beach which is available say for example if you have the uh, place if you take a ground water table the soil uh, below the ground water table is completely saturated that we have discussed and here the soil above the certain portion of the soil above the uh, close to the ground water table depending upon the uh, type of the soil it is 100 percent saturated above that certain zone there is a partially saturated and here there is a absence of capillary pressure. So, if you look into here uh, uh, if you if you the take the soil here it actually possesses the pore strength and in this zone it actually possesses the pore strength and again it processes the pore strength. So, here what it actually happens is that the confining pressure results from the column of the water hanging on the different Minsky at the surface of the beach. So, relative density more or less for example, if you take uh, you know near the uh, you know uh, situation where in the beach uh, the relative density of a soil is more or less same that is relative density is nothing but E max minus E by E max minus E max minimum E max minus E minimum where relative density of a deposit is more or less same because the same process is actually it is getting happened. Uh, only change is the presence of the capillary moisture or its absence. So, when there is uh, you know a cap in the capillary zone uh, when there is a inadequate uh, when, uh, uh, when the water is actually less let us say that you know the all the sand molecules the sand particles is actually covered with uh, uh, you know a thin film of water that makes the uh, you know the particles uh, you know the so called uh, uh, which is called as a negative pore water pressure. So, this negative pore water pressure uh, pulls the particles together and makes actually you know uh, you know if you look into this effective stress at this point here where the total stress is 0 uh, and the negative pore water pressure is minus u and then with that what will happen is that the total stress is uh, uh, nothing but uh, sigma which is 0 minus of minus u it becomes sigma dash is equal to u. That means that whatever the negative pore water pressure is there uh, that much uh, you know effective stress it actually generated that makes actually the soil to carry uh, you know exhibit uh, good strength. So, this allows us to you know for uh, riding uh, vehicles or uh, uh, one can uh, jog very close to the uh, place where uh, you know the wave breaking does not take place. But in case if there is uh, excess amount of water then what will happen is that the negative pore water pressure which is actually binding these particles will get diminished. So, in the process what will happen is that the same soil actually sense strength reduces to 0 with that the prop the process of what uh, we get physically obs observe is that uh, physically a sinking feeling which actually comes because of the loss of the strength which occurs in the phenomenon. So, when the sea water breaks the capillary minisci which are there surrounding this uh, particles sand particles gets washed off and temporarily induced shear strength is lost. So, the capillarity phenomenon whether it in the in the below the ground uh, suppose if you even if you have got a um, you know the uh, particular soil type which actually has got a capillarity uh, phenomenon capillarity uh, phenomenon what it does is that the uh, it make because of the uh, presence of uh, capillarity uh, effect there is a possibility that this uh, effective stress will be high. But you know this makes if increase of effective stress makes that you know temporarily the shear strength will be high. But once this capillarity phenomenon effect diminishes then there is a possibility of the loss of that effective stress that means that the temporary shear strength which actually exhibited by the soil will be lost. So, hence because of the because of this nature the effect which is actually due to because of the capillarity water is not really considered in the design. So, when the sea water for example, in this particular phenomenon what we consider when the sea water breaks the capillary minisci gets washed off and temporary induced shear strength is lost. So, this is an example uh, for the observed behavior of the soil very close to the beach where there is a you know soil exhibits good strength that is because of the negative pore water pressure which is actually prevalent in the portion. As you go away from the you know wet zone because of the you know partial capillarity that negative pore water pressure will not be there. So, because of that you know the soil actually positions. So, it is very difficult to walk in this zone, but it is very easy to walk in this zone. So, because of uh, this particular region this uh, uh, you know this uh, capillary phenomenon can be explained. Another physical example for the capillarity phenomenon is that 
the honeycombing particularly we have discussed that soil fabric in case of some uh, sand particles when they are actually moist and then uh, when there is a film which is actually surrounding the sand particles. So, what will happen is that this exhibits honeycomb structure can result in some granular soils or in some sandy soils uh, because of this uh, film which is actually surrounding the particles. So, here the enlarged soil particle which is actually shown here the capillary water, capillary water in wedge formed by soil particles. So, the bulking structure in sand is due to uh, you know capillary reaction. So, for example, here what does it mean is that if the particles are actually appear like large volume, but in between there are uh, you know sand uh, particles are actually filled with air. So, this is something like uh, uh, when you look the real uh, you know moist sand, it actually exhibits somewhat like honeycombed uh, structure that is why it is actually called as the honeycombed uh, soil fabric structure in granular soils. This is because of the capillary action. The strength grain in granular soil is due to partial saturation and surface tension is actually this particular surface tension which is actually making the particles to bind uh, together is actually called as apparent cohesion. So, this type of uh, apparent cohesion is uh, prevalent particularly uh, above the ground water table uh, where there is uh, you know the possibility of the uh, evaporation and uh, also in some uh, ash deposits like uh, coal ash deposits. Uh, these particular type of uh, you know cala colas deposits they exhibit very high apparent cohesion. So, the strength grain in the grain or granular soil is due to partial saturation and uh, surface tension and uh, partial saturation and surface tension and it is termed as apparent cohesion. So, this cohesion is actually a property of the soil which we will be discussing uh, later, but if you look into this here now there are two types of cohesions one is called a true cohesion uh, which is uh, uh, generally uh, referred with the uh, or which is actually uh, uh, is the property of the soil which actually can get because of the presence of uh, type of the mineral. For example, carbonates actually can induce some cohesion in the soils in silty type of soils. So, because of that the silty type of soils can actually stand vertical to some extent where if they are actually having a prevalent carbonate deposits. Uh, so, in that case that particular type of soil uh, set to actually exhibit a true cohesion, but if a granular soil when it is actually partially saturated and uh, because of the surface tension the, the particular uh, nature which actually resulted is, is the is termed as the apparent cohesion. So, let us uh, look into some example uh, in this uh, particular example one a soil profile which actually shown in the figure we need to draw the total stress pore water pressure and effective stress diagrams and the soil in the capillarity zone uh, a capillary zone is assumed to be saturated. So, here a soil uh, profile is actually shown here and this is uh, at the elevation 0 meters that is at the ground surface. So, this is the ground surface and here it is minus 1 meter and uh, this particular portion the soil is actually 0 to minus 1 meter the soil is partially saturated minus 1 to minus 2 meter. Uh, by virtue of the presence of ground water table here the soil is actually uh, capillary this is called as a capillary zone and uh, uh, the water column is actually maintained above the that means that up to uh, 1 meter above this distance uh, there is a uh, you know the saturation is actually prevalent. And minus 2 to minus 4 meter uh, that is uh, uh, again uh, it is actually having saturation. So, there are two types of soils layer 1. 0 to 4 meter and 4 to 11 meters there is layer 2 that is here from that is about 7 meters. So, the solution for this can be worked out like this if you look into this particular figure what we have done is that we actually have transformed the figure which is actually given like 0 0 meters that is elevation. So, this is the ground surface what we are calling this as ground surface and uh, this is the uh, minus 1 meter we are actually indicating each level as 0 0 and 1 1 2 2 3 3 and 4 4. The 4 4 is the place where the bottom of the strata and uh, at uh, 2 2 
uh, there is a ground water table and at 3 3 the from 3 between 3 3 to 4 4 the layer 2 is actually starting between level 0 0 to level 3 3 there is a layer 1. So, if you wanted to get the total stress and uh, pore water pressure and uh, effective stress uh, uh, diagrams. So, in this example we have actually taken gamma w the unit weight of water as 10 kilo Newton per meter cube. Okay. Now, let us uh, consider at minus 1 meter that is at level uh, 1 1 the total stress which is nothing but 18.5 that is the bulk unit weight of the soil into 1 meter which is nothing but 18.5 kilo Pascals. At minus 2 meters that is 2 meter below the ground the uh, total stress is 18.5 plus 19.2 into 1. So, it becomes 37.7 at 4 meters that is at minus 4 meter level 37.7 plus 19.2 into 2 uh, because 19.2 is nothing but the, the saturated unit weight of the soil. 2 meter is the uh, vertical distance between minus 2 meter to minus 4 meter. With that what I have got is that 76.1 kilo Pascals or kilo Newton per meter square as the uh, total stress. At minus 11 meter 76.1 plus 21 the saturated unit weight of the soil is actually given as 21 kilo per meter cube into 7 which comes to 223.1 kilo Pascals. So, what we have done is that at uh, elevation minus 1 meter that is 1 1 and at elevation 2 2 at elevation 3 3 and elevation 4 4 we have actually determined total stresses. The pore water pressure is actually obtained like this we actually have said that between the uh, zone 1 1 and 2 2. So, 2 2 is the level of the ground water table. Now, because of the capillarity effect what we have actually discussed is that uh, uh, in the zone of the capillarity there is a capillarity height which is actually called as h suffix c h c. So, in that case minus gamma w into uh, 1 that is minus 10 into 1 minus 10 kilo Newton per meter square is the native pore water pressure which is actually exhibited by the soil at uh, uh, level 1 1. So, at level 1 1 that is elevation minus 1 meter the negative pore water pressure is minus 10 kilo Pascals. Uh, in principle for example, if say there is no capillarity effect and uh, if uh, water table is actually not there means then there is no pore water pressure, but because of the virtue of the capillarity effect the minus 10 kilo Pascals uh, uh, pore water pressure is exhibited at this level. When it comes to the minus 2 meters that is the level where the ground water table is there. So, here the 0 uh, you know the pressure is actually is here 0. When it go when you go down below the uh, ground water table that is say 2 meter below at uh, minus 4 meter which is level, level nothing but uh, uh, level uh, 3 3 what we see here is that 10 into 2 that is 20 kilo Pascals or 20 kilo per meter square. When we actually have minus uh, 11 meter that is nothing but 20 uh, plus 10 into 7 that is 90 uh, kilo Pascals or kilo Newton per meter square. So, uh, this we have actually got uh, total stress and this we actually have got uh, pore water pressure. Now, the effective stress which is actually um, nothing but sigma total stress is equal to sigma dash plus u that is what actually we have actually discussed. So, effective stress is equal to sigma minus u. So, in this case as the at level 1 1 the total stress is 18.5 minus of minus 10 which comes out to be 28.5 kilo Newton per meter square or kilo, pas kilo Pascals. And at uh, at level 2 2 the pore water pressure is 0. So, hence 37.7 minus 0 you will get 37.7 and at level uh, 3 3 that is uh, at the point elevation of minus 4 meter 76.1 that is total stress minus pore water pressure is positive here which is minus 20 which comes to 56.1 kilo Pascals. And in case of uh, uh, minus 11 meters so, 223 minus 1 minus 90 is 133.1 kilo Pascals. So, 
we actually have done is that total stress, pore water pressure and effective stress has been calculated at each levels and the diagrams are actually obtained like this. So, here what we have actually indicated again the soil profile at uh, 0 that is the ground surface. So, the total stress is 0 at this point hence this ordinate is actually obtained and at this point it is 18.5. So, the pressure is actually represented here and this uh, is 37.7 and here it is ordinate is 76.1 and here it is 223.1 though the unit weights are little bit different, but the minor uh, variation will be there in the gradient. And here in the case of uh, uh, pore water pressure for example, here uh, what we have discussed is that this is if this is uh, uh, subjected to uh, you know uh, completely saturated zone or this is the capillarity this is this is the uh, capillary zone saturated capillary zone. So, minus 10 kilo Pascals is obtained. So, uh, what we have discussed in the previous lecture this indicates that you know as the uh, comes to the ground surface the pore water pressure uh, reduces to 0 that means that here the soil actually tends to be in the partially saturated state that means that depend, depending upon the degree of the saturation the soil actually uh, you know has the decrease in the pore water pressure. And uh, here what we have is that uh, uh, 0 here and then here it is uh, 20 and here uh, what we have the pore water pressure is 90 kilo Pascals. So, when we take this one sigma dash that is nothing but sigma minus sigma u uh, sigma, sigma dash is equal to sigma minus u we actually get the effective stress diagrams. So, in the given problem what actually has been asked is that for the soil pro profile that draw the total stress pore water pressure and effective stress diagrams. So, we actually have uh, uh, used the concepts what we have discussed and then we try to draw uh, with the effect of the uh, with the effect considering the ground water table that is which is actually having a capillarity uh, effect. Now, let us uh, try to do one more example uh, from the slide which is actually shown here. Uh, in this example a 3.5 meter thick silt layer underlined by a 3 meter thick uh, clay layer is shown the figure will be shown in the uh, next uh, slide. Uh, we need to calculate the total stress pore water pressure and effective stress at points A, B, C, D and E. The water table is located at 2.5 meters uh, below the ground surface and the capillary rise uh, in the sil uh, silt layer is 1.5 meters. Assume that the silty layer has a degree of saturation of uh, 60 percent only in the in the zone of capillary zone, capillary rise. So, here we actually have the partial uh, uh, partially saturated soil with a degree of saturation of uh, only 60 percent. So, a 3.5 meter thick silty layer underlined by a 3 meter thick clay layer is actually considered in this figure and we need to draw the total stress pore water pressure and effective stresses at points A, B, C, D and E which we are going to see in the next slides. And the water table is actually located 2.5 meter below the ground surface. So, uh, the data which is actually given here is uh, the silty layer which is actually having the specific gravity of 2.7, void ratio 0.6 and uh, degree of saturation 60 percent. Uh, degree of saturation is uh, sorry this is uh, degree of saturation here is 0 that means that the soil is in almost in dry state. And here uh, the zone of the partial capillarity zone wherein the degree of saturation here is 60 percent the, the uh, grey uh, colored zone which is actually is the partially saturated capillarity zone. And here below the ground water table the soil is actually having 100 percent saturation and degree of saturation is same the specific gravity of the solids is same and uh, the water table is actually located 2.5 meter below the ground surface. And uh, here the clay layer having a specific gravity of 2.69 and void ratio of uh, 0 0.807 and specific gravity of 100 percent. So, we let us locate at this particular point and at this particular point A, B, C, D and E. So, this is the partially saturated uh, capillarity zone. So, with that total stress which is can be given like this uh, based on the uh, this data one can actually obtain the uh, the gamma which based on that we will be able to get that is 16.55 kilo Newton per meter cube. 
So, with that what we get is that this particular uh, ordinate and uh, by going further with uh, uh, with this with, with uh, degree of saturation 60 percent by using the void ratio we can actually get the gamma relevant to here and adding this you will able to get this ordinate as 44.75 kilo Pascals and here below which is 64.95 and at this point it is 121.89 kilo Pascal. So, this we have plotted here total stress and here this is the pore water pressure diagram here at this point u here it is 0 and when it comes to this point here as the soil is actually partially saturated what we can actually write is that minus uh, uh, 0 0.6 into 1.5 into 9.81 uh, here it is actually taken as 9.8 9.81 kilo per meter cube with that this ordinate what I have written what we have written is a minus 8.82 kilo Pascals and at this point it is 0 and then we have here 9.81 and then here it is 19.24 kilo Pascals. So, when we take the, uh, the draw the effective stress diagram here it is 0 and then when we have got at this particular point just above this we have got 16 just above above B the ordinate is 16.55 kilo Pascals just below B it is 25.35 kilo Pascals and then at this point 44.75 because this point is 0. So, what we have is that the total stress minus pore water pressure it is 44.75 and 55.4 and then here it is 82.65 kilo Pascal. So, in this problem what we have done is that we actually have applied whatever actually we have learnt in this module uh, to try to calculate uh, total stresses and effective stresses uh, uh, and all from the uh, by knowing uh, uh, the pore water pressure distribution. So, in this particular module what we try to understand is that the particularly we actually have tried to understand the origin of the soils and, and, and then we actually also discussed about uh, uh, different types of uh, soils and soil deposits which are actually prevalent in India and other parts of the world. And then we also discussed about the soil classification particularly we have concentrated on the unified soil classification systems. And uh, before uh, soil classification system we have actually discussed about different uh, you know weight based and volume based uh, ratios and which which are actually used uh, for estimating uh, the soil uh, parameters. And then we also have discussed about uh, soil uh, compaction and then we have discussed about how we can actually determine the particle size distribution or how we can actually determine the different physical states of uh, fine grained soils. And we have actually given enough uh, attention towards uh, determining uh, the in situ densities as well as the uh, densities in the laboratory. Thereafter, we try to discuss about the effective stress and capillarity.